millions of years ago, huge reptiles called dinosaurs roamed the earth. The name dinosaur means terrible lizard. Dinosaurs in Minnesota? Everybody says no, but they are here. The only thing is that they're buried deep. You know, with the last, well, we, we have three, four glacier time periods over Minnesota here. So every time the glacier came, it covered up more and more stuff. So we got dinosaur, just as many here as Montana, South Dakota, I think, uh, but they're all buried 60, 100 feet deep. I'm sure we've got dinosaurs underneath our feet right here. So I've been with rocks pretty much all my life. And I've got a sugar lump collection, some odd, some odd collections. And a week and a half ago, I bought a big nut, the largest nut in the world. And it comes from uh, two little islands out in the Indian Ocean. And uh, the biggest nut is probably around two feet in diameter, six inches thick. And uh, the one that I just purchased came from London, England. It's probably about a foot, a foot wide and probably six inches thick. And that should be here by the end of the month, so I'll be starting a nut collection now too. So, and maybe I'm the biggest nut of them all. So, every time I see, go out and see somebody, they got a collection. If it's natural history oriented, if it looks interesting, I'll start collecting it myself. I got the spear, I also need a tall shield. I probably started collecting funny little things as a kid. A pretty rock, seashells if I ever found them. But my, my collecting was all just put it in a box, put it in a closet, find it 10 years later and go, oh wow, I remember where I found that. Or I don't remember where I found that. And uh, I'm still kind of the pack rat of the two of us. And Larry, Larry is the guy who's the genius at, at displaying stuff. I love that about him. So I lived in the Philippines for basically for 15 years among uh, people that were written up in the, um, I think it was a 1911 National Geographic. The title of the whole article was The Headhunters of Northern Luzon. And uh, they really were headhunters and they were hunting uh, human heads. This was a spear that was given to me by a family there. And I've got uh, three other spears that I've collected since then. Uh, probably the most interesting piece. This is the, a musical instrument with the, uh, that's the, that's the human jawbone and the instrument my mother would like, she would, she said when I was gone, she'd go and find this thing and tap on it because it has such a nice tone. Every once in a while he'll call me and say, come on out to the museum, I want to show you something. I would never think to discourage or say, no, you can't do that because I, I love what he does. We put up the museum. My most favorite thing to collect now in 2021 would be fossils. This case here is all dinosaur bones, uh, with the exception of one piece in here. But these are my bonus for looking for ammonites when I'm cracking them rocks, looking for those ammonites inside. Uh, dinosaur bone are kind of, when it's wet, they kind of turn blue purple color, so you can see these quite a, quite a ways away. Uh, the front row here, these are all leg bones, or what's left of the leg bones. The middle row, two rows in there, that's pretty much all vertebrae. And then there's a mixture of ribs and vertebrae and leg bones in the back. And 
in this showcase this holds some of my prized materials uh, especially two items I've just purchased here in the last year this is a big egg it came from the elephant bird it came from Madagascar North, uh, Northern Africa uh, this bird that laid this egg died out in about 1790 it was the last known bird this bird was about 10 feet tall and was related to the ostrich family. Uh, there's only 40 eggs in the world that are not cracked like this. And all the rest out there, they're all shells put back together again. So there's not too many of these around. The same person, the son of this guy that passed away, showed me this here. It was underneath a bookshelf in his house. First time I saw it, it was full of dust and I thought it was a petrified log. It's uh, 32 pounds, and uh, it looks like a bunch of icicles kind of all glued together. But this turns out to be a chunk of amber. I treasure that one quite a bit because the, in 1995, the largest piece was found in London, England, in a museum, and that piece weighed 34 pounds. And this piece here is 32 pounds, so. There's a rock display that just fascinates me because when he showed it to me, I thought, oh, those are some of the ugliest rocks I've ever seen. And then he goes, wait, you wait. And he turns off all the lights and he turns on a black light. And these are amazing rocks. They're, they're bright orange, they're bright yellow, they're purple, they're blue. But if, if you look at them in natural light, they're, they're just boring. Under the black light, in the dark, they are stunning. I would add that I am so proud of him for his talent in displaying things. I, get, I, I go into a sweat when he says, you really should get those things displayed. And I'm going, I, I, I don't know how to do that. And I, I actually bought a big, huge showcase, um, an antique one, and he helped get that moved into the museum. He says, no, you gotta put your, your horse stuff in here. And I came out and I put some stuff different places and I thought, eh, that's the best I can do. Well, he came out and tweaked it all. And I go out and I look at that and I go, how did he do that? And it, it's a, I keep telling him, it's, you have a gift. You have a gift and, a, and an eye and a talent for that that is just remarkable and I love that about you. fascinated with natural history, anything natural history. I'm here from Minnesota and who know it, I'd have a big seashell collection from around the world. I've been to Florida twice, picked up maybe three shells and that's it. But uh, I'm very fascinated with the ocean life. There's so much to be discovered out there yet. Like I say, even bought a nut. I mean, it's, 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 I just never know what's gonna be popping up next in my journeys. I know a lot of people that have collections, and my big thing is if you got a collection, show it off. Put it on the end table or put it where people can see it. And then if you can show it, make somebody, make somebody's day, make somebody smile or laugh. To me, that's, that's, that's all I do it for. I don't do it for the money, don't do it for anything else, but it's just kind of the thrill of showing people. Postcards is made possible by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. Additional support provided by Margaret A. Cargill Philanthropies. 
Mark and Margaret Yakel Julien on behalf of Shalom Hill Farms, a retreat and conference center in a prairie setting near Wyndham, Minnesota, on the web at shalomhillfarm.org. Alexandria, Minnesota, a year-round destination with hundreds of lakes, trails, and attractions for memorable vacations and events. More information at explorealex.com. The Lake Region Arts Council's Arts Calendar, an arts and cultural heritage funded digital calendar showcasing upcoming art events and opportunities for artists in West Central Minnesota, on the web at lrac4calendar.org. Playing today's new music plus your favorite hits, 96.7 Cram, online at 96.7cram.com.